Refueling Your Faith, and it is Wednesday, and today we're in the book of Judges. So last week we talked about Joshua and how they now are in the promised land, the people of Israel. And so now Judges talks about a period of time between when Joshua passes away and the elders that were with him, they pass away until the period when we get to First and Second Samuel, uh, First and Second Kings, where they actually have a king to rule over them. So in the book of Judges, we find out that um, they did not drive out the people the way that they were supposed to. The people who were living there, uh, the Canaanites and the Jebusites and all of those sites who used to live, who lived there, they did not drive them all out, nor did they drive out the gods. And so because of that, while they were in their promised land, instead of worshiping God, instead of remembering all that he did for them, bringing them from Egypt and then honoring the covenant that they had with them when uh, at the Mount of Sinai, they said that we would follow you and we would follow you according to these commandments that you have given us. They forgot about that and they worshipped Baal and they worshipped the other gods that were actually the gods of the people of the land in which they inhabited. And so because of that, uh, God, in an effort to try to bring them back into uh, obedience and into the covenant that they had made with God, he sent nations to conquer them and to um, help them to, to oppress them, basically, so that they would call to God again. And so we find in the book of Judges so many instances where the people of Israel just stopped living according to the way that God had called them and then began to hold up other gods in front of him. And we know that when we read the Ten Commandments, there shall be no other God before me. And so God um, continues to send people in their periods of disobedience, send nations to overtake them and to plunder them. And then when the people of Israel would remember and get tired of the oppression that they were experiencing and they would call out to God and God would send a judge. He would send a judge to deliver them. And so this is where we come across Deborah, the female judge. Uh, so women were used uh, to help the people of Israel. Um, he sent Gideon and we remember Gideon because he uh, asked God to uh, for a sign that he would want Gideon to actually go up against the nation Midian that had actually plundered them. And so uh, getting and asked for the fleece to be wet on the on the ground and everything else on the ground be dry, but only that fleece would be wet. And so God did that. So really it was a sign. Yes, I want you to go up against the people of Midian. And then he said also, hey, well, just give me one more sign. Let all the uh, earth around the fleece be wet and then the fleece be dry. And God did it again. And so then Gideon went up against the nation of uh, Midian to uh, serve as the judge during that time. And then we also find out about Samson. And we remember Samson because he was so strong. And so Samson was taken down by Delilah and um, by uh, he eventually shared what his secret the secret to his strength, which was his hair. Uh, and so she told that to the Philistines, which is the nation that they were being oppressed by. And then they were able to um, overtake him. But then Samson in the end is able to overcome them. Um, and so they were judged by Samson. And so we just find out about a couple of the judges. We find out about uh, how disobedient the people of Israel were. But God continued, continue, continue to chase after them. And so today I just want to talk about basically the patience of God. And we're going to look at Judges 2, Judges 2 and 14 or 16, Judges 2 and 16. It said, then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them from the hands of those who plundered them. Then the Lord raised up judges who delivered them from the hands of those who plundered them. And so read the book of Judges. He raises up judges to deliver them. And I tell you what, he sends so many judges and the judges come and they provide leadership for the people of Israel. And as soon as they die, Israel goes right back and disobeys God and God um, to correct them sends a nation to oppress them. And then the Israelites uh, get tired and then they cry out to God and God sends another judge. The cycle 
of this is amazing that God does not just destroy the people or just say, you're just going to mess up again. So I'm not going to send another judge, but he does send another judge. And so I just want to talk to you about God's patience with us. Uh, You really get that from uh, this book that God is so patient with us and he's patient with the people of Israel during this time. And so he is also patient with us, his people. You've accepted Christ and there are areas in your life where you continue to serve other gods. You continue to put other things ahead of him. And he said to us a long time ago that he will not allow no other God before him, whatever that may be. Now, we don't usually serve gods that are a molten image or anything like that, but we generally do put things before God that become gods to us, that become something that's so much more important to us, whether it be fame and popularity, whether it be possessions that we have, whether that may be uh, appetites that we have that uh, for food, for drugs, for sex, for whatever, that is outside the will of God, and yet we choose to follow that instead of the God's what God's commands are. That is a God to us. And so don't be discouraged when you're having a strong uh, or you're having a difficult time overcoming something in your life. Remember that God is patient with us. Sometimes people are not patient with us. Sometimes we are not even patient with us. But don't give up on your fight to be righteous because he will continue to send nations to oppress you. Sometimes we're going through things in our lives and we believe that it's the devil. Uh, It's spiritual warfare. But sometimes we're going through things because God wants to correct us and he wants to change behavior in us. Hebrews 12 talks about, let's look that up. Hebrews 12 um, talks about how God disciplines us. It's something that we should look forward to. It's something that we should actually feel blessed by when he disciplines us because he doesn't do it to everybody. We are it's a blessing to be disciplined by him. So Hebrews verse I mean chapter 12 10 through 11 says for they dis- disciplined us for a short time. This is our earthly parents. Our earthly parents dis- disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. All discipline for The moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it afterwards, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And so God is going to discipline us. God is going to send a nation to uh, oppress us as the people of Israel. He's going to send situations so that we can correct our behavior, uh, be drawn back to him so that we can be back on the right path. When we accept Jesus Christ, his call is to for us is a call to holiness. It's a call to be who he has called us to be, to live the way he originally created us to live. And that is in line with his behavior, in line with his character. But he is patient with us. Don't beat yourself up. I'm not saying that you ought to be like the Israelites and continue and continue and continue uh, blatantly. Um, But if there are areas in your life where you continue to mess up, Know that God loves you enough that he will discipline you and that he will help you to get back on the right track. And I found in my own personal walk in areas where I struggle that I have to be around a group of a body of believers. So if you don't have friends that are trying to walk in the same way that uh, you are walking, you need to get around that. Uh, And sometimes he does call us to this period of loneliness where we are really drawn to him so that we can... um, Recognize that our strength comes from him and not so much from other people, but generally pray for God to send people that will help you to walk in a way that honors him. Stay in your word. I hope you're listening to these sessions and they are encouraging you, but there are also so many other resources for you to um, draw you closer and to keep you abreast of uh, how God wants us to live because this this world, when you're watching TV, when you're listening to the radio, all of those things are really not drawing you to Christ. They're drawing you to other things unless they have a Christian being, uh, a biblical being. So just praying that you would uh, spend a lot of time in that, knowing that God is not giving up on you. The Philippians 1 and 16 says that 
I mean, one in six says, he that began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. So he's going to perfect you. He's going to keep working with you until the day of Christ Jesus. So remember God's patience when you're tired of your own mess ups. Don't give up. Don't be ashamed. Know that God is going to correct you and it's in love simply so that you can not to shame you, but to draw you closer to him. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Next week, we'll be in the book of Ruth and I will talk to you next Wednesday. God bless.